Welcome to this introduction to multilingual storytelling, provided by the Fantaise project. In this video, we're going to consider three main questions with regard to multilingual storytelling. First of all, what is multilingual storytelling? Secondly, why do it? And finally, how could it be used in language classrooms? So first of all, what is multilingual storytelling? When we tell a story, whether we do it in speech, in writing, or drawing on multimedia, we use words, images, sounds to create a world and the people in it. Multilingual storytelling just means using more than one language to do so. So in a nutshell, multilingual storytelling is a form of storytelling that uses more than one language or language variety. By making use of more than one language, multilingual storytelling can help us represent the world as the rich, multifaceted place it is. For example, think about a vibrant metropolis buzzing with dozens of languages. Or think about a conversation between grandparents and grandchildren in which one generation uses dialect, the other one doesn't. Or think about a family party during which adults talk in the majority language, but switch to their mother tongues whenever making jokes or scolding their raucous children. This is not just about dialogues, though. Languages are everywhere, from announcements that the mall will close in 15 minutes, to music playing in the background, from band t-shirts to stickers used to decorate pencil case. Of course, multilingual storytelling can help us with plot points, too. Additional languages can be a challenge or a solution. They can be a major plot point or just a step on the way to solving a bigger mystery. Think about a secret message in a language the protagonist doesn't speak that leads to him talking to a translator who will eventually turn into a romantic interest. Or think about a witness to a crime who is interviewed by the police in an international lingua franca not spoken well by the policewoman, leading to a misunderstanding that takes some time to resolve. Or think about a Spanish-speaking person panicking in a stuck elevator and an Italian-speaking person realizing that their languages are just close enough to have intercomprehensibility and drawing on this to calm each other down. Don't worry. No te preocupes. Non ti preoccupare. What is more, Multilingual storytelling can also add humor to a text. Some jokes only work in one language, and other puns work by combining different languages. Multilingual settings also provide plenty of opportunities for situational humor, such as funny misunderstandings due to language barriers. In pedagogic texts, multilingual storytelling can be used to foster learning. For example, in the MELT project, multilingual theater scripts were created to help young learners develop their reading skills in multiple languages. In the Sherlock Jr. series, English dialogues are combined with German inner monologues and German narration, thereby making it easier to understand for German-speaking children who are just starting to learn English as a foreign language. Another example would also be the multilingual series game Melange, in which language learners can playfully practice and discover English in other languages on a virtual trip through different European cities. In the context of fan tales, an important aspect of multilingual storytelling is that the learner's stories are in the center of attention. As storytellers, they use their own diverse linguistic resources. This could include native languages, school languages, foreign languages, dialects and social acts, or any other languages the students are interested in or have researched. For example, learners in Germany might draw on German as school language, on English or French as foreign languages, and on Turkish, Russian or other languages that are spoken by them or used in their community. When thinking about multilingual storytelling, you will of course want to consider related benefits and opportunities as well. So why do multilingual storytelling in the first place? Well, overall, telling and writing multilingual stories creates rich and multifaceted opportunities. So let's highlight some key points in this regard. 
developing multiliteracies, creating a space that values all languages and supports the expression of multifaceted identities, and building on a plurilingual repertoire. But what exactly do these points mean? In order to cope in our daily lives, it is not enough to just be able to read and write in a traditional understanding. We need to be able to use all kinds of different semiotic systems, which means we have to draw on spoken and written language, on images and sounds, in order to get our meanings across. This has already been recognized in 1996 by the so-called New London Group in their famous article on multiliteracies. Literacy today needs to reflect changes in the use of technology and to enable learners to navigate linguistic plurality. Today, being a competent reader and writer is inextricably linked to the multimodal and multilingual reality of our lives. But even though we are confronted with multilingual settings every day, in many schools, it still seems like there's only one language around. This can mean that all of the language students bring from homes and communities are invisible. Too often, they are not acknowledged and celebrated. Gogolin called this the monolingual habitus. To weaken the monolingual habitus of multilingual schools, we need to support projects and ways in which students are encouraged to draw on all of their languages, not only one. Multilingual storytelling can be one way to weaken the monolingual habitus, to value all languages and to support the individual expression of multifaceted identities of students and teachers alike. In order to do so, it is vital that the students and teachers are aware of their own linguistic resources, of the languages they know and encounter in their lives, and that they are encouraged to draw on them. This is also reflected in the Common European Framework of Reference and its companion volume, in which the Council of Europe provides descriptors for building on a plurilingual repertoire. Multilingual storytelling can contribute to building on the students' linguistic resources and help to make the linguistic wealth of the school community visible. Sounds great so far, but how can multilingual storytelling be included in class? This overall question could of course be answered with a variety of examples. To give you an idea of how the integration could look like, let us start with some suggestions. A great way to introduce learners to multilingual storytelling can be to reflect on the role multilingual aspects play every day. Are the students aware of multilingualism in their lives? Which languages do they encounter on a daily basis? In their neighborhood, hometown, community, on their way to school, when shopping, meeting friends, or simply spending their free time in a number of different places? Languages are all around us, visible as well as hearable. So why not engage in a little linguistic landscaping or soundscaping activity as a basis for future stories? In multilingual storytelling, we can draw on these experiences and build on the actual or imagined landscape and soundscape. For example, including conversations that may take place in the underground, advertisements you might see at the station or notifications you might hear there. Nächster Halt, Ostendstraße, Europäische Zentralbank. Nächster, Ostendstraße, the European Central Bank. Aufstieg in Fahrtrichtung links. Exit to the left. Ideally, Students should be encouraged and assisted to draw on familiar contexts that prior knowledge and experience. So be aware of your students' linguistic resources and help them become aware of their own plurilingual repertoire. Which languages do they speak? Which languages are part of their daily lives? Which resources do they have access to, including classmates, family members or other experts in their communities? One example to deal with these questions and raise awareness might be working with the language's clothesline. Imagine it's language laundry day. The students design a piece of clothing for each language in their repertoire and reflect on the role each language plays for them. Which languages would they connect with which item? How do they feel about a particular language? Which adjectives would they use to describe it? 
It is vital that all languages matter, are appreciated and can be used in future storytelling activities. Building on this first basis in brainstorming, learners could try to come up with their first examples of multilingual storytelling. A sample task could look like this. Retell a familiar story by moving the story to the present time. Choose a place you know well and use more than one language. The main thing is, students can use their prior knowledge and experience. When writing their scene, they can integrate some of the language samples they've collected earlier. A concrete example here might be retelling Sherlock Holmes in the present time. Changing Sherlock's location from his famous flat in 221B Baker Street in London to a place the learners know best, their home. You'll be surprised about the creative, vivid ideas about an unfolding conversation on how to solve a chosen mystery. Of course, other changes of location could be possible as well. Let your imagination run wild. If the story plays in Japan, well, then Sherlock and Watson are Japanese. The student's task would be to adapt the language use accordingly. Apart from changing the place and time of the story, you could also experiment with languages by taking away a language from a character, by adding a language option, or by playing with possible misunderstandings. For example, asking your students to write a Sherlock Holmes story that is based on a misunderstanding of a word that means very different things in different languages, like Gift, which can mean a lovely present in English, but dangerous poison in German. In any case, multilingual storytelling needs practice, both to take the first steps and to go beyond the basics. In order to enhance your students' writing skills, it can be very helpful to get to know a number of multilingual texts and to look at their particular features, both great parts as well as possible areas of improvement. Reading different multilingual stories and watching multilingual movies or series can support the learner's understandings of how the use of more than one language can contribute to a text and affect the reader in a positive or negative way. Examples might be texts the students already know and bring to class or texts the teacher brings to class. Interested? For further inspiration and concrete examples, check out our teacher handbook, selected lesson ideas and storytelling prompts on our website. After all, whichever texts and activities you choose to introduce and promote multilingual storytelling in class, one question that shouldn't be forgotten, but is unfortunately too often overlooked, is the question of assessment and feedback. Having worked on various multilingual projects, Diane Dagenet and her colleagues critically take stock in this area, pointing out that very seldom if ever are students' productions evaluated? On the contrary, the multilingual component is at risk of not being valued enough. So to make sure that the students' products and their use of languages is valued, teachers and students can benefit from working with rubrics. Previously prepared rubrics can help to make sure that enough attention is placed on the task completion, on the languages that are used, and of course on how they are used considering their overall effect. Has actually more than one language been used? And did this happen in a purposeful way? For example, contributing to the character development and a rich setting on the one hand, while avoiding stereotypes and distraction on the other hand. In the end, both teachers and students should be encouraged to evaluate results and to provide suitable feedback. Therefore, peer evaluation sheets can be a valuable addition helping your students to consider the way languages are used in their classmates' stories. What was their favorite use of language and why? Did the use of more than one language make the story, for example, realistic, interesting and fun? Is there anything they would like to recommend to their peers? Check out our teacher handbook and website for helpful templates and further recommendations. But the main thing is, get started. So now it's your turn. Enrich your classroom with multilingual storytelling today.